Hello, 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 everyone, and welcome back to the Finding Peace Within podcast. I am your host, Ms. Lisa L. Dalton. Now, the Finding Peace Within podcast was created to help you find your authentic self through spiritual awareness. And how do you do that? You do that by studying the Word of God, doing the necessary work that you need to do to find your peace within. It is a journey, may I say that. Now, if this is your first time visiting the podcast, I wanna say welcome. If you are a repeat guest, welcome, welcome back. If you would like to connect with me on all social media outlets, I say this, just Google my name, Lisa L. Dalton, and you will find me there. You can find my website, findingpeacewithin.org. And on the website, you can find my books, you can find previous podcasts, you can go back and listen to all my Lisa Six and Threes, which are my morning motivations that I post on all my social media outlets, which gives you a little hope for the day, gives you a little hope for today. I want you to get your pens and your pads as we take this journey to finding peace within together. And as always, I like to open up with a word of prayer before we get into our podcast. Lord, we thank you for this day and we honor your name and we just praise you, O God, for who you are in our lives. Lord, we just thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. Lord, we ask that you be with us as we continue to study more about the sacrifices that we make as musicians' wives. And I hope that this podcast will bless someone, that wisdom was set in, and that we understand that they were called and anointed to help their husbands birth out the ministry. In Jesus' name we pray, amen. I am so excited about this series, um, Married to Music. Um, being a musician's wife, um, I just I'm, I, I just got a lot to say. I'm just going to say it like that. And I hope you enjoyed part one of what I had to say. And again, if you weren't able to listen to um, Sister Vanessa Gilchrist and Sister London Dry, do go back to Finding Peace Within podcast with me, Lisa L. Dalton, and listen to um, their testimony and their transparency on what it's like to be and to have been a musician's wife. Now, let's get back into how to stay safe, sane, and married to your musician. Woohoo, I love it. And I have a good story to share with you all about supporting your man that stand by your man. Yeah, I had to stand by my man this weekend. But here we go. So last week we did five. I did the first five last week. Um, if you don't have your pen and pad, go ahead and get your pen and your pad and write these down. Number one was take care of yourself. So we know we have to take care of ourselves, do what we need to do to maintain our sanity. If it means exercising, going to visit some friends, of course, with the pandemic, we can't do much visiting. But once it's over, you can start visiting again. And also um, going to the spa, getting your hair done, whatever you like to do to reconnect with yourself, do that. Also, Set clear boundaries. Make sure that you don't put yourself self out there um, saying that you're going to do something that you know you're not going to be committed to. Set those boundaries. For me, I know when we're in the studio, hey, my husband got to be nice to me. And that's a boundary because if he ain't nice, then I ain't doing it. <laughs> Number three, love the band. Remember, guys, they have a special connection. You got to love the band. You can't talk bad about the band. They have a unique, intimate relationship. Those guys spend a lot of time together practicing and preparing. Um, this Just this past weekend, um, we were preparing to do a virtual concert. And even after we left, the, the singers left the studio from recording, my husband remained I know I left there at 10 30 11 he didn't get home to three yeah 3 a.m and I wasn't um on my phone buzzing him saying are you still at the studio or neither was I uh, up waiting for him to come home when he got home he he told me to wake up because we got some lines to do <laughs> and you know what I got up and did those lines I was like you want me to get up and record 
Yes, you got to get up and record because that video had to be done that day, that morning, so he can submit it to the people in Ohio. So that's what you call supporting your musician husband. I got out the bed in my robe and I recorded some lines so that we can present the best product, the best uh, presentation of the ministry. Number four was develop tough skin. Yeah, man, don't don't take everything personally. Do not put your feelings out there and your feelings are hurt when your husband and or um, you feel like you're being disappointed. If you're at a gig and your name's not called, it's okay. Just know that he loves you and everybody know who you are. Number five, have a solid sense of self. You got to find what it is you've been called to do ministry wise. Yes, we are learning how to fit function and flourish in our husband's ministries but God calls all of us to something there is something all of us have been anointed to do it is your responsibility to connect with the Lord and ask him Lord what is my gift what is it that you've given me to do and I share this with you all and if you follow me you already know that you know I'm a minister of the word I'm an author of course I sing but that's not my ministry I'm an author I'm a blogger I'm an inspirational speaker and I love what I do you know I'm a youtuber I you know I I just I do a lot but it's finding peace within ministries I have my own thing going and I'm always sitting here doing some type of ministry every day 15 minutes I spend time on my ministry and that's what you need to do for yourself number six is be self-sufficient this is where we start part two be self-sufficient get involved in your own life being in a long-term relationship marriage with your musician entails long periods of separation get used to it and get involved in what it is you like to do don't don't be afraid to go out and do your own thing because he is definitely going to go out and do his own thing. It doesn't mean that he doesn't love you. It just means that you need to have your own thing. Whatever it is you like to do. I like to work in my yard. I like to sew. And of course I have my ministry. But I have my own hobbies too. Of course I love working out. So that that's my thing. I enjoy having fun doing that. There are times I'll just get in the car. Well, not now during the pandemic, but I would just get in a car, drive across the street or take a walk across the street to the little lake that we have in our neighborhood and just sit there and read and meditate. You got to find your own thing. Be self-sufficient. I like doing house projects. I like doing those type of things. And, um, and my husband doesn't get involved with what I do all the time. You know, we have our own interests together and we have our own interests separately and that's the one thing that you need to do don't be sitting around waiting for him to finish practicing or coming home from a gig or coming home from a, a band session you or whatever his role is as a musician in my case my husband is the, the music director he's the creator he's the writer he's the teacher he's he's the it so when we all meet he is with the lead he is with the band and he is with the singers and he's with them in sessions and I don't I don't trip out about that I don't trip out about that number seven develop a strong support network this is huge this is huge because unexpected situations will come up and dynamics will change and I've seen that over the years for me and Stephen I've The dynamic of our relationship has changed where he needs me has changed. You know, there, there, my husband would go to the studio and don't take me because I'm not needed that day. Or he may have singers come over to do tracks and he, he doesn't need me that day. And there are times when he goes off on his own and do his own thing. But I have people that I can connect with. If I'm feeling some type of way about something, I don't dump it on him until I've talked out my emotions and make sure that I'm not, you know, feeling something that doesn't exist. You know, so don't assume 
when you when he pulls away that that means he doesn't love you understand there are times when the stresses of the role is too consuming the responsibility of leading a ministry is very very consuming and dealing with your need for your need of neediness hmm it's more important for you to be able to channel that neediness but of course make it known if you need to spend some quiet time with him but don't do it while he's in the middle of trying to put something together like example this past weekend you know my husband spent not just this past weekend but the whole week of july the 20th through the 24th he spent the entire week putting music together you know we kissed I fed him whatever else he needed from me. I was there, but I did not say you haven't spent any time talking to me this week. No, because I know the importance of what he's doing. I understand he had deadlines to meet. I couldn't help him meet those deadlines, but what I did as his support system here at home, I gave him the time and the space he needed to do what he needed to do. So that's what you have to do. When you know what's going on, don't don't be don't don't be all in your feelings now. The man got stuff to do or the woman's got stuff to do. So you need to find yourself some support system. I have my friend girls I talk to, we chit chat, and man, by the time eight eight thirty, nine o'clock come, I'm ready to go to bed anyway. <laughs> so <laughs> yes you gotta have a support system but but just know that your husband still loves you while he's preparing for ministry number eight skip the show sometimes man i wish i could do this but i can't do this i can't skip a show because i'm a singer so if you are a musician's wife and you want to go to every gig sometimes you just need you know you don't you don't have to be there all the time I know you probably want to, uh, at least for the first, if you're newly wed and you, you really just want to be there to support him, you know, go. But eventually, as your marriage matures, you're you're going to want to stay home sometime. And especially if you have little ones, yes, you're going to want to stay home sometime. And he will know that you do support him, even if you're not there all the time and sometimes they they like coming home and telling you how good it was of course I don't go to the studio studio with my husband all the time so when he does come home I say well love how was the session and he comes back in such a good mood and I love it it's like that's his kryptonite when he leaves and he you know he's doing his music and he comes back all happy I love it so it's a benefit when they leave and, and do music and come home all happy especially if it went good you know so it's okay for for you not to be there okay it's okay he coming home (laughs) number nine except that you are a part of the com the compartment that he has in his mind um miss vanessa helped me with that because i always felt you know like i come second but no men compartmentalize which is true so it's where do you fit today not that you're not important is that where do you fit today but do know this one thing you cannot get in the way of the music i'm telling you because there there will be resentment there will be resentment when you try to tell him he's spending too much time doing music or he's spending too much time in the studio man that's that's like my husband telling me i can't work out uh we them there's fighting words as you can say on the street don't be talking about my mama because we gonna we gonna show up do a showdown it's gonna be a hoot nanny for real don't tell him he cannot go practice oh you been in here long enough when you coming out i need you to help me with these kids that that gets nothing the bible says it's better for a man to be on the rooftop than to be in a house with a nagging wife so don't be nagging him cherish his creativity support his dreams you both will be happier and you'll grow as 
people. You will grow together. Sacrificing, sacrificing your immediate desires can be immensely rewarding in the long term. When he gets that stuff done, when he gets those tracks laid out, or he get that part figured out. My husband was practicing. I know it's, he was in there working those chords out. And I was at work and I was just smiling. I said, man, he making it happen back there. And when he finishes the song, I just like, oh my God, I love what you did with that. Oh, I love how you fixed that up. I love that chord that you put right there. And that just boosts, you know, men got big egos anyway. So that, that affirmation, they all need it. So let him know, man, I loved what you did with that track. Pat him on the back and say, good job. It's okay. It is okay to let your boo know he doing good with his gift. And the Bible lets us know that uh, we were made for them anyway. Because what did God say? It wasn't good for Adam to be alone. So what did he do? He went inside of him, got a rib and made a suitable helper. We are suitable which means which means we have the equipment necessary to help that man's vision come forth. That's what that suitable helper mean. If you are a hindrance to him, you are not a suitable helper. You are a hindrance and you are a liability to the ministry. And again, I mentioned this last week. It doesn't matter whether it's music or whether it's preaching. Or, you know, or rather it's art, whatever it is he has a desire to do. But if you feel like you're being left out, you are a hindrance. Now, some of them can get a little bit carried away and more consumed with work and forget about home. But as wives, we have the magic, ladies, to help them come back home. We have the magic. So remember to use what your mama made, what your mama gave you, but use wisdom in doing so. And finally, number 10, the rewards of sharing your life with a musician is huge. It is huge. I think about all the people I've met, um, not just the people I've met, but just the growth that I've seen in my husband as he studies more of the word of God to prepare songs and the songs that the Lord has given to him and he comes back and he shares those songs with me you know it's it's interesting being married to a talented person and even with me being an author when I create something and I show him what I've written you know he is the exact same way guys it's rewarding when you are married to an artistic person a musician is what we're talking about here you can find your your place in how to be a part of his creativity sometimes I may just go in the back and just sit while he's putting something together he likes to work solo which is fine but sometimes I may just go back there and sit and and don't say anything and then I'll come back up and he just say well how did you like that I was like I love what you did we have to be our husband's number one cheerleader we have to be because there are vipers out there waiting to tell him how good he is, ladies. I'm just saying, and that's real talk. So don't leave your husband uncovered. Give him what he needs. Affirm him. Let him know he's doing a good job. Let him know how you support him. Let him know that you're there for him. What do you need me to do for you? Because when he came home Saturday morning at 3 a.m. and said, I need you to get up and lay some tracks. I didn't start cussing him out and say, nigga, you crazy. I've been asleep. You want me to do what? Now I kind of did think that I was like, Oh my God, he wants me to get up. And I mean, I struggle sometimes awake and now you want me to do it asleep. But you know what? I, I got myself together and I went back there in that studio and in, in my robe <laughs> And I laid down those tracks. I think I got back in bed like, I don't know, 4.30, slept to 7. But um, that's what you do when you believe in your husband and you believe in the vision. 
and you support his dreams. Now, if he got some kind of dreams that he, you know, he can't fund or he say he got a dream, but you don't see him doing no work, then y'all might need to have a conversation. But that's not the case for me. My husband works hard and I see the manifestation from his hard labor. Now, let's go back and recap what we just studied of five through 10. So number five was, number six was be self-sufficient. You got to have your own thing, ladies. You got to have your own thing going on. You can't be sitting around waiting for him to come home so you can do stuff together and play with you. Develop a strong support network. Have your sister girlfriends. Have have somebody that you can bounce things off. Make sure that you're not in your feelings when you're feeling some type of way. Number eight, skip the show sometimes. You don't need to be there all the time. Come, Let him come home and tell you how good it was. And then you can get excited from that point. But you, you don't have to travel with him everywhere he goes. Number nine, accept that you are a part of the, c- the compartment. You are compartmentalized. Doesn't mean that he doesn't love you and that you're not first. It's just that you're just not first today. (laughs) You're not first today, but doesn't mean he doesn't love you. He loves you. You know, he loves you, but he got music on his mind right now. That doesn't mean he can't have love on his mind later. That's what that means. And number 10, the rewards for being married to a musician is amazing. There are rewards to being married to music, to a musician. Number one, after a while, you're going to have so much time to be alone and do your own thing. And you, you're going to be glad when he leaves the house after a certain amount of years of being together. It's going to, it just makes room for you to do what you like to do. And it is okay. When he gets back home, you all can share those good times together again just remember ladies we were made for the man we are their helper we are their help me suitable fit for them to help them birth out their ministries and in turn you will have all the freedom and the support you need to do your own ministry I pray this helped you today and as we all continue to walk in our own anointing as we support our husband's music ministry. Let's close out with a quick word of prayer. Lord, we thank you for this day and we honor your name and we praise you, oh God. We just thank you for your love and your grace and your mercy. We thank you for this series of of being married to music and what we need to do as wives and how we support our husbands, how we learn, how we fit, function, and flourish in their ministries. We understand that they love us dearly. And when we support them and we're by their side, there is nothing they would not do for us. For the word of God says that when a husband does not love his wife, his his prayers are being held up. So we want him to know how important we are to his dream coming forth. We thank you in Jesus' name. We pray amen, amen, and amen. Now you all go make it a wonderful week. Remember, there are other episodes about being married to music. You can go back to my website findingpeacewithin.org or go to your favorite podcast listening station and listen to the other podcasts from the other ladies that have shared. Now, remember, a centered soul is a centered mind. Be blessed. Thank you for listening to the Finding Peace Within podcast with Lisa L. Dalton. Now remember, you can always connect with me on social media. Facebook under Lisa Dalton. Twitter at I am Lisa L. Dalton. Instagram, Lisa.Dalton. And LinkedIn, Lisa L. Dalton. Visit my website, FindingPeaceWithin.org, where you can read some of my blogs, find the books that I've written, listen to previous podcasts, and even some of the workout videos that I've created. Until next time, remember... 
to find peace within, a centered soul is a centered mind. Be blessed.